Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about the spinal cord part one. Now first of all, what is spinal cord? It is the lower elongated part of the central nervous system. Okay, and it is cylindrical in shape, slightly flattened anteroposteriorly, and occupies the upper two thirds of the vertebral canal. Right now, in female it is about forty two centimeter long, and in male about forty five centimeter long. Now uh, remember that uh, it actually uh, now if you know that we have a brain stem. Okay, now this brain stem actually connects the brain and the spinal cord, and the brain stem actually contains three main parts. That is the midbrain, pons, and medulla. Okay, so this spinal cord. Actually, uh, we can say uh, it actually extends as a downward continuation of the medulla oblongata of the mid of the uh, brain stem from the upper border of the this upper border of posterior arch of the first cervical vertebra to the lower border of lumbar first vertebra. So remember the extension very important upper border of C1 to lower border of L1. Now one important term conus medullaris. Now what is this? This is the over here as you can see this part, the tapering end of the spinal cord. Over here this is the conus medullaris. It is a tapering end of the spinal cord. Extremity we can say. Now we have one more term phylum terminali. Now this mainly comes in the uh, pia mater part. Okay, we will discuss about the uh, the meninges of the spinal cord so in that pyramid comes so it is made the part of uh, of the pyramid only this phylum terminali now uh, over here just remember the phylum phylum terminali is actually uh, as you can see over here the apex of the conus medullaris is apex of the conus medullaris actually continues downward as a thin thread like filaments known as the phylum terminali we'll discuss about this in detail in the uh, pyramid part of the meninges of the spinal cord just remember Over here, it is the uh, thread-like extension from the apex of the conus medullaris. Now, the positional changes of the spinal cord. Now, uh, at the intrauterine life to the birth and at the adult stage, the changes actually occurs in the length of the spinal cord. Now, over here, as you can see, in the third month of the intrauterine life, up to this third month of, of this intrauterine development, the spinal cord actually extends. Throughout the length of the vertebral canal, as you can see, throughout the length of the vertebral canal, right, and the spinal nerves passes through the intervertebral foramen at the level of the origin. Now, what happens is there after the vertebral canal actually goes faster as compared to the spinal cord, and the terminal end of the spinal cord gradually shift at a, of course higher level because this vertebral canal is actually growing at a faster rate. So, of course, this spinal cord. Uh, will actually uh, go at a higher position because this is actually this vertebral can is actually growing at a faster rate, so it will come upwards. This spinal cord will actually come or shift at to a higher level. Consequently, at the birth over here, as you can see, over at the birth, the cord ends at the level of the third lumbar vertebra, almost at the lower border of the third lumbar vertebra during the birth. Okay, and in adults, it terminates at the level of the lower border of L1. I told you before only C1 to L1, right? So just remember, while uh, third at the third month, uh, whole length during the birth, newborn baby is actually having at the the spinal cord from the uh, C1 to at uh, up till L3, lower border of L3. While the adults have C1 to lower border of L1 spinal cord extension. Now, now why to study this positional changes of the spinal cord? Because the knowledge of this variation in the vertebral level of the lower end of the cord is very important to avoid any injury to the cord while performing the lumbar puncture, especially in the children. Okay, so just to avoid any kind of injury, these locations are very important, and these are actually important for the exam purpose as well. Now, next is the spinal meninges. Now, what are these? These are actually uh, the three protective membranes of the spinal cord. Okay, dura mater, arachnoid mater, and the pia mater are the spinal meninges from outside to inside. Now, first of all, look at this diagram. This is the dura mater, then the arachnoid membrane, and then the inside. At the inside, there will be pia mater. Now, first of all, what is dura mater? Dura mater is actually over here. Now, the dura mater extends from the foramen magnum. Foramen magnum is studied in the norma basalis part of the skull. So the, from the foramen magnum, it is the largest foramen of the skull to the sacral number two vertebra. Okay, so foramen magnum to the S two. Okay, in the lower border of it. So remember, the spinal cord actually extends from the C one to L one. 
while this dura mater actually extends from the from a magnum to the s2 right now the space now we have many two uh, main spaces in the uh, this dura mater epidural space and the subdural space now just for uh, a mnemonic try just remember that whenever this this sub word comes sub means inside inside of the particular uh, particular thing okay means sub over subdural space means inside the dura mater an epidural space means outside the dura mater so whenever this sub word comes that means inside of the particular word okay uh, ahead also you will have one sub arachnoid space so means inside the uh, arachnoid matter so now first of all what is epidural space as the name is epidural means outside the dura matter okay so uh, this dura matter so uh, the space between the dura matter and the vertebral canal okay is termed as the epidural space and very important contents of this epidural space are remember three it is the loose areolar tissue semi liquid fat and the internal vertebral venous plexus it has internal vertebral venous plexus remember and the space between the dura mater and the arachnoid mater or the membrane is the subdural space so remember very important content of the epidural space is the internal vertebral venous plexus now very important the difference between the spinal dura and the cranial dura this both the spinal cord and the uh, cranium both has dura mater right so what is the difference between these two now uh, the spinal dura is actually of the single layer only that is the meningeal layer while the cranial dura actually have double or two layers that means the inner meningeal and the outer endosteal layer so only meningeal layer over here and over here two layers inner meningeal and the outer endosteal now spinal dura mater has no folds in it while cranial dura mater has various of the folds and the name of the folds are remember there are only four folds in the cranial dura that means uh fac cerebri fac cerebelli tentorium cerebelli and the diaphragm diaphragmatic cella so remember four four uh, folds uh, fac cerebri fac cerebelli tentorium cerebelli and the diaphragmatic cella now spinal dura mater has actually uh, epidural space in which we were having the internal vertebral venous plexus right well over here we don't have enough epidural space now the arachnoid matter the second layer is the or set, second meninges is the uh, arachnoid matter or membrane now remember it is a thin delicate transparent and avascular remember this is avascular while the pyramid the inner one is actually vascular but but this one is the avascular remember now uh, remember its extension very important it actually extends at the upper side above it is actually uh, continuous with the arachnoid matter of the brain it is actually connected with the arachnoid matter of the brain while downward it actually extends up to the second sacral vertebra while the dura mater actually extends from the foramen magnum to the s2 while over here it actually extends to the arachnoid matter of the brain to the s2 now next is the pyramid mater pyramid mater is the innermost layer of the innermost meninges of the spinal cord remember it is highly vascular okay and this this matter actually closely invests the spinal cord and continues below the spinal cord remember as a thin thread like prolongation known as the phylum terminal we discuss about this this phylum terminal actually begins from the apex of the conus medullaris what is conus medullaris it is the tapering end of the spinal cord and from there phylum terminal actually extends as a thread like structure okay now remember we have we have one space over here in the sub arachnoid space now what is sub arachnoid space as the name says sub arachnoid at only before only whenever the sub word comes that means inside that particular word so sub means inside the arachnoid uh, this arachnoid matter so the sub arachnoid space between the pyramid matter and arachnoid matter is filled with the cerebrospinal fluid or the csf so this is the arachnoid matter and this is the pyramid matter in between these two layers will be having csf uh, csf containing this sub arachnoid space now remember the sub arachnoid space in the spinal cord actually is is, uh, is in continuation with the sub arachnoid space of the brain also now distal to the terminus of the spinal cord sub arachnoid space this one around the phylum terminal it becomes roomy forming a pool of csf known as the lumbar cisterna 
वॉट इज लंबर सिस्टर ना वेन दिस पैन वुड एक्चुअली टर्मिनेट और एंड्स ओके आफ्टर द फायर टर्मिनली एक्चुअली बिगिन्स एट द एंड ऑफ दिस पैन कॉर द फायर टर्मिनली बिगिन्स राइट सो एट दैट एरिया डिस्टल टू टर्मिन फायरल कॉर द सब एरेक्नोइ स्पेस अराउंड द फायर एम टर्मिनली ओके दिस स्पेस अराउंड द फायर एम टर्मिनली बिकम्स रूमी एंड फॉर्म्स अ पूल ऑफ सी एस एफ and that pool of csf is known as the lumbar cisterna now this lumbar cisterna is actually very important why because the lumbar puncture actually done at this side only to take the csf because over here there is no spinal cord and that's why there will be no uh, no damage to the uh, main uh, ascending and the descending tracts actually passes through the spinal cord okay so remember what is lumbar cisterna it is actually uh, the space or the pool of the csf Or the cerebral spinal fluid at the end of the spinal cord or term termination of the spinal cord. Okay, and this space or the pool actually contains the CSF around the uh, phylum terminali. Now, it, uh, very important thing. What are the functions of the spinal cord actually? Now, remember the spinal cord contains large number of ascending and descending pathways. It serves as a conduit for nervous information. passing through and fro between the different part of the body and the brain now the main function of the spinal cord is they execute the simple reflexes in the body and also transmits the impulses to and fro from the brain now the lumbar puncture very important now it is mainly done to obtain the csf from the lumbar cisterni i told you what is this it is actually the pool or the uh, uh, pool or the space containing uh, cerebrospinal fluid which is present between the subarachnoid space and the phylum terminali Now it is mainly done between the L3 and L4. Now layers are actually spinal needle transverse is to reach the spine. This CSF are this eight layers mainly: the skin, superficial fascia, supraspinatus ligament, infra interspinatus ligament, ligamentum flava, epidural space, which actually contains the internal vertebral venous plexus, dura mater, and over over here you can also write a uh, subdural space also, and then the arachnoid mater. Now the very important processes of the pia mater, also known as the special parts of the pia mater. Pia mater is the innermost layer of the meninges, and and this pia mater actually gives way to the processes from it. These are the four processes of the pia mater, or the special parts of the pia mater. That is the phylum terminali, subarachnoid septum, lina splendens, and the ligamenta radiculata. Now first of all, the phylum terminali. Okay, I told you before only this is the this thread-like structure actually extending from the uh this end of the uh cornus medullaris to the end of the vertebral column or the vertebral canal right now this is actually delicate glistening white thread like structure extending from the tip of the cornus medullaris to the first coccygeal vertebra dorsal aspect now the phylum terminal is actually about 20 cm long and mainly composed of two things remember no composed of non nervous fibrous tissue that means the pyometer and few nervous fibers also that means the second third and fourth coccygeal nerve mainly embedded at the upper part of this phylum terminali right now the phylum terminali actually consists of the two main parts that is the phylum terminali internum and the phylum terminali externum okay now i told you before only that the phylum terminali is actually of 20 cm in length so this internum is of 15 cm and the externum is of 5 cm Okay, and this internum, phylum terminal internum, is actually lies within the dural sac. That means up to S2 sacral vertebra or the sacral number second vertebra because the dural, the dura mater actually extends up to uh, from the foramen magnum to the S2 vertebra, right? So it actually extends only up to the S2 vertebra, means up to the dural in the dural sac. While this phylum terminal externum actually lies outside the dural sac. That means below the level of the second sac sacral vertebra. Now next is the subarachnoid septum. Now over here, as you can see, this is the subarachnoid septum, and it is a mid-sagittal fenestrated pile septum. Okay, which actually connects the dorsal surface of the uh, spinal cord. This is the dorsal surface of the spinal cord, and this is the ventral surface. Or we can see this is the anterior one, and this is the posterior one. So this posterior dorsal surface of the spinal cord with the arachnoid mater. As you can see, this is the arachnoid mater. This is the, this red part, dotted part, is the this one. This is the arachnoid mater, and this is the uh, uh, dorsal surface of the spinal cord, right? So, pia mater actually connects these two by the help of subarachnoid septum. 
Now next is the linear splendness. As you can see in this diagram, first of all, this over here, as you can see, this is the anterior median fissure of the spinal cord. Okay. And over here, this line, this part is the pia mater. This one. This is the pia mater. Right. So in the anterior median fissure, the pia mater actually gives off a septum. Right. And uh, where this process or the septum is given by the pia mater, the pia mater over here actually represents a thickening over here. As you can see, the pia mater actually over here represents a thickening. And this thickening over here is known as the linea splendens. Okay. Now next is the ligamentum denticulata. Now over here as you can see, these pink structures are the ligamentum denticulata. They have made 21 in numbers. And uh, these actually ribbon like structures or ribbon like thickened bands of the pia mater that actually extend on the lateral side of the spinal cord. Okay, and they may pass between the, this two as you can see, laterally between the uh, posterior and the anterior nerve roots of the spinal cord. Okay, as you can see over here. On each side of the spinal cord, remember. Okay, and uh, the lateral margin of each band, the lateral margin of this, each band actually depends 21 tooth like structures or tooth like processes which actually pierces the arachnoid matter. Okay. Over here, there will be uh, outside the pia mater, there will be arachnoid matter. So, these are the processes coming out or thickenings of the pia mater. So, of course, these structures will actually pierce the uh, arachnoid matter. Okay, and this after piercing the arachnoid matter, they are attached to the inner surface of the dura mater, as you can see. This is the dura mater. Okay, so it will get attached to the inner surface of the dura mater between the points of the emergence of the spinal nerves. Now, in short, just remember, they extends laterally between the posterior and the anterior nerve root of the spinal cord and actually cover the spinal cord from its whole length. And they have made 21 tooth-like processes which actually pierces the arachnoid matter and it attaches to the inner surface of dura matter. Okay, now what is the main function of this? Now, as you can see, it actually attaches the spinal cord with the dura matter. And as because of this, it actually helps to anchor the spinal cord in the middle of the subarachnoid space. And that's why the spinal cord doesn't move off its original place because of this ligamented denticulata. Okay. Now, I told you before only that the ligamented denticulata is actually 21 tooth-like structure. Right. So, first teeth actually is present at the Remember, foramen magnum. The first teeth of ligamentum denticulata lies at the level of the foramen magnum. While the last or the 21st teeth of this ligamentum denticulata actually uh, present in between the T12 and the L1 spinal nerve. T12 and L1 spinal nerves. Now, the very important clinical aspect of this ligamentum denticulata is now you may know there is an operation known as a chordotomy. Okay, and in that operation, mainly the surgeons use this ligamentum denticulata as their guidance okay why because you may know that means uh, you may know that the uh, mainly the section of the sensory tract of the spinal cord is mainly done to relieve the pain okay and when the surgeons want to uh, do the section of sensory tract to relieve the pain the knife is mainly put in front of this ligamentum denticulata to, okay for the section of the uh, this sensory track and if they want to do, do the section of the motor track that means the pyramidal track we can say uh, the knife actually plays behind this ligamentum denticulata so for the section of this uh, sensory, sensory track they will put the knife in front of this and for section of the motor track they will put the knife behind this ligamentum denticulata now one more important thing is that the lowest tooth the 21st tooth of the ligament denticulata is actually forked okay and the posterior root of the first lumbar nerve lies on the outer prong of this fork. So, in the lower region of the spinal cord, it is the surgeon's guide to the first lumbar nerve and gives him a nerve root of no number for which he can determine the position of whatever nerve root he is searching off. So, this, in short, this last denticulate is actually forked by the neurosurgeon and the prong of this fork actually shows the level of the first lumbar nerve. Okay, because uh, because this this uh, have a logic that uh, this denticulata is mainly present up to the L1 spinal nerve. This is actually present between the T2 and L1. Okay, and because these two are forked, so at the end of this fork or the prong of this fork actually shows the level of the L1 spinal nerve. Okay, and they can do the further diagnosis and the determination of where the which spinal nerve will be present. So this was the first part of the spinal cord. We'll discuss about the further topics of the spinal cord in the further next videos. Hope and hope well. Thank you so much.